we're going to shift gears with the phrase, math is awesome, in all caps, exclamation point. This is something you might hear our next speaker say. Just take a look at his Twitter handle, at easy as 314159. With a background in computing science and algorithm design, and a particular interest in optimization problems and complexity, it's safe to say he loves math. Please put your hands together for Kevin Loney. There's a lot of math, math in this one. I was originally going to give a talk tonight on social choice theory, but I was having trouble working that into 20 slides. So instead, let's talk about an infinite number of numbers. I did this little calculation in my head, and since there are an infinite number of infinities, as long as I only talk about one infinity in that an infinity of infinities, then I've distilled my talk down to nothing. <laughs> and so tonight, I'm here to tell you that because math is weird, we don't know any numbers. At this point, most of you are probably sitting there thinking, I know some numbers, my phone number is a number, the prices at the concession stand outside are numbers. These are very valid thoughts, so let's spend some time tonight informally proving why your intuition is incorrect and dive right in with the whole numbers. So this is all straightforward stuff that we all probably learned early on in school. One, two, three are in here, the prime numbers are in here, your phone number is in here, Graham's number is in here, which was first used in a proof in 1977 and is so large if you tried to write out all of its digits, the universe would collapse into a black hole. <laughs> Another thing you probably learned early on in school is fractions, or the rational numbers. All the whole numbers are in here because they are just themselves over one. Anytime you've had to pay for something, the price is in here. Outside the circle are the irrationals, and we can't represent them as fractions. For most of us, these are the everyday numbers, but what you might not know is they're kind of weird. The whole numbers are completely contained within the rationals, and there are numbers that are rational that are not whole numbers. But the set of whole numbers is the same size as the set of rational numbers? If anyone's curious as to why that is, I have a proof on this back of the index card if you want to come find me later. <laughs> this behavior is going to come up a lot, and it's called countably infinite. And this brings us to the constructible numbers, which is a class that we don't talk about that often, but are nonetheless important. These are numbers you can get using a ruler, a compass, and a finite number of steps. You can build all of these numbers yourself on a sheet of paper. The golden ratio is in here, and so is the square root of two. These, these are a lot of numbers, uh, there are a lot of numbers we can't construct this way, like pi, a number we'll come back to later, and the weirdness continues here. All of the rational numbers are constructible, and there are constructible numbers that are not rational numbers. But there are as many rational numbers as there are constructible numbers. But we just showed that the rational numbers are the same size as the whole numbers. So the constructible numbers are countably infinite, and the same size as the whole numbers. <laughs> Next are the algebraic numbers. These are the roots of a polynomial. If you set all of the c's in that equation to integers, then find everywhere it equals zero, all the solutions are the algebraic numbers. I promise that if that equation is causing you any anxiety, that's the only one in my presentation. <laughs> the cube root of three is in here. And the algebraic numbers are also countably infinite. Which brings us to the computable numbers. These are numbers that we can generate with a Turing machine, which is really just a fancy way of saying that we can write a computer program to generate them. Case in point, this is a program to generate pi. It takes an infinite amount of time to run, but it's a finite number of instructions. <laughs> Computable numbers are also countably infinite, so there are as many of them as there are whole numbers. And by now you're probably thinking, we sure have talked about a lot of numbers, and clearly we know some numbers. But I have a surprise for you, because we've started to reach the edge of the map, and beyond this point are dragons and fantastical creatures. Alan Turing showed in 1936 that there are numbers we cannot compute. We can only represent them by writing out every single one of their digits. Finally, let's talk about the normal numbers. If you were to write them out, every one of their digits would be roughly distributed uniform uniformly. We know of a, complete, a few normal numbers, and they have almost all been artificially constructed. For example, Chapernown's constant and the Copland Erdős constant, which are just the whole numbers and the prime numbers glued together. But they are both computable. What about a number that's normal and uncomputable? Triton's constant lives in that crescent outside the computable numbers, but inside the normal numbers. It is the probability that a randomly generated computer program will halt. But this diagram's a little misleading, because the crescent at the top is the biggest set of numbers. We have to, so let's flip it around. This looks better. Almost all the numbers we've talked about fit in where the computable numbers and the abnormal numbers overlap. 
And we've left the realm of countable infinities. Everything outside the computable numbers is uncountably infinite. But what does that mean? Let's informally put all this together and find out how all these numbers amount to nothing. <laughs> Let's start with two lines. Count the numbers on the, uh, the points on each line. Which line do you think has more points? Hands up for A. B? How about both of them? Same? Ah, everybody knows what's up. <laughs> this is my favorite geometric proof. So begin by picking a fixed point P. If we draw a line from any point on A through B to P, then that line will intersect B at a unique point. So A and B have to have the same number of points. If we stretch A out so it's infinitely long, we can still map it point for point to B, which is finite. And it's going to be a lot easier to draw a finite line in this step. Let's take this finite length line with an infinite number of points and start labeling all of the numbers we've just talked about. The whole numbers, the rationals, the algebraics, and the computables. And then we can start removing them one by one. But a point is really just a straight line that starts and ends at the same place. So we have this line, and we start removing pieces of it that have no length. And when we're done, we're still left with the line. It's almost like all of the numbers we know and use on a daily basis belong to a set that's so vanishingly small that it's like we know no numbers at all. Every number you've ever encountered is actually kind of rare and unique. Let's revisit our diagram and try and put this into some kind of perspective. When Jacob Bernoulli discovered what would come to be known as Euler's constant in 1683, I doubt he imagined it was one of the most important numbers in mathematics, with applications in engineering, physics, and quantum mechanics and finance. There might be all kinds of interesting numbers out there in that realm that are yet to be discovered, with applications we have not even invented or even imagined yet. I had a high school math teacher that was particularly fond of this Picasso quote, to the point that I think I heard it five days a week for two years. And I will admit that what we showed tonight would not pass formal rigor. There are some complexities here that wouldn't fit in 100 pages of proof, let alone 20 slides. But I hope it gave you an opportunity to see numbers from a new perspective. Over the years, I've had many people who helped kindle my interest in mathematics and computing science, for which I am and always will be grateful. I have been lucky in that, so to me, math is just challenging and not scary. I know a lot of people don't have the best relationship with math, but I'd like to hope that maybe we've helped mend some of that tonight and made it perhaps a bit more strange, vast, and wondrous. Mm -hmm.